Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This video idea is not original by any means, but it came to me when I heard about all the fuss some entitled developers are making because Baldur's Gate 3 is a hit. For years and years I've been disappointed with the direction I see this industry is going. Developers don't play their game, or don't play games in general. To be a good game developer, you need to be a nerd to some extent. More nerdiness needed in certain positions in a company, of course, but either way, being a nerd helps you tremendously while developing video games. Hey! Hi there! Good to meet you! What can I do for you today? I'm a PDQ-88B Securitron, but you can call me Yes Man. I used to be just like all those other Securitrons out on the strip, but then my neurocomputational matrix was completely reprogrammed to be nice. Very, very nice. AAA companies hire semi-incompetent people, at least in certain positions, so they stay in line with what higher management wants with, without questioning them ever and if they are not incompetent they need to be pretty spineless for the same reason it needs to be one or the other or hell why not both any competent person that is hiring knows that you need people that challenge your ideas there is no point having a team that yell yes in unison every time someone is vomiting a stupid idea and then starts doing it without question but why are companies hiring people like that seems counterproductive right it is and is not depending on the company why would they need someone that thinks for himself when they already have that magic formula call of duty fifa world of warcraft and so on the thing is okay some companies really have the formula so they don't fail but most of AAA and indie companies don't have it and still hired by the same logic these instructions are a pictographic representation of the least imaginative way to assemble these components. This right here is why Sweden has no space program. Well, it, it looks pretty good in the store. Well, it is an inefficient design. For example, Penny has a flat screen TV, which means all, all the space behind it is wasted. We could put our stereo back there. And control it how? Run an infrared repeater, photocell here, emitter here, easy peasy. <laughs> good point. How are you going to cool it? Hey, guys, I got this. Yeah, hang on, Penny. Analysis paralysis is also one of the top reasons the gaming industry is slow and going to shit year after year. This is the opposite of the last point I've made and it consists of people not knowing what the hell they want to achieve or overthink something only because they want to reinvent the fucking wheel. Number 4. Fear of copying what others did good in previously released games or at least have that as a starting point. Say for example you want to have in your game a weapon progression system with attachments and stats and all the good stuff. Why make pointless meetings and endless talks about what attachment is linked with what stat of the weapon? Look at games that already did that, shamelessly copy the entire system and then start thinking how you can give it your own twist and if it's even worth it. If nothing pops up, don't stress over it. Odds are that system is not defining your entire game, so no player will give a shit if you shamelessly copied it. Have fun, enjoy the party. I am dead inside. Older devs get jaded. When you have a family, you will not have the time and or energy to dedicate to gaming, research, self-improvement and many other things needed for you to keep up with the gaming trends, software and engine updates, etc. Your priorities shift and that's normal. The only thing that comes to mind that alleviates this is hiring of new blood that motivates older people to work harder and smarter and gives them a bit of good anxiety if you will. The fear of being worse at your job than the new younger guy who probably is being paid 
way less than you. What are the unique selling points of your game? This question may lead to point 3 if you linger too much. Don't get me wrong, there is a time and a place for it. But there is a reason all cars have 4 wheels and a generic shape. You don't see companies slap shark wings on top of a car just to differentiate from the competition. It would make it swim better for sure, but it doesn't affect the driving experience one bit. Or it can potentially make it even worse. My point with this is, a game doesn't need to always innovate to make numbers. It just needs to be good. That should be the focus. Ah, games as a service. They are designed to keep you playing and paying for months and years. They are not made for you to really enjoy and play for a finite amount of time then move on. No, 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 no. They are designed ground up to keep you there and drip feed you rewards bit by bit while staying with your credit card nearby, throwing your hard earned money at, away at their DLCs, expansions, battle passes and skins. These games are most of the time not a complete experience out of the box. They are never-ending treadmill. And that robs you the immense pleasure of finishing a good game and putting it away looking at the next game you want to play. It's like a TV series that should have stopped at season 2 but it drags for 10 more seasons because why the fuck not, right? These games also like to frustrate players. The trick is to dangle the sweet character just out of reach Making you believe you get that cool experience if you throw some mo more money at the monitors. Spoiler alert, that never happens, if those devs do it the right way. Am I right? Am I right or am I right? Joe, come to my garage. Hold up, Trump. I got stuck somewhere. I don't know where I am. Where are you guys at? Ocean. Joe, how do you always manage to get stuck in these places? Guys, I'm about to hop in my brand new Lamborghini. That's fire, dog. The last couple of years, this trend become more and more apparent, and in mo most cases, I think of should be avoided for obvious reasons, debated for years. That goes for most entertainment, really. Unless you treat all ideologies with at least a bit of respect, don't do it. Almost all games are in some way political in nature, but it's annoying when it's shoved down your throat. The point I'm making is, if a player finishes a game and thinks, thank god there's no politics in this game, even if there, there are, it means it's good. It just needs to be subtle and tasteful. Have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. And, and by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. Players are stupid. This pops up all the time. Oh, we don't need to frustrate the player because he or she might rage quit. Oh no, we need to dumb down everything so the players can understand at a glance what's going on at any point. This comes from the belief that some developers have that players are really dumb. Give players what they want and in most cases you generate goodwill with them. More on that at the end of the video. Not that you're in the wrong, it's that you're in the minority. You're right, but most people are fucking dumb and they'll buy them anyway and they'll buy into the game and they won't care. That's just the way it goes because gamers, every gaming boycott is only one three minute cinematic away from being over. This time for real. While at last point I touched upon what some developers think and how they treat their players, now it's time to end the video with a bang. Players are really stupid. Pains me to say it, but it's true. As long as pre-order games that are promising as the moon and deliver a third. As long as we get sucked in life as a service games and spend mindlessly copious amounts of money and meaningless skins and DLCs and shaders and whatnot, these companies will suck us dry. As long as we buy a pre -re 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 release of a game that was a hit 10 years ago, as long as we buy a battle pass on top of the $70 price we paid for the game, and so on. 
I feel I can go forever on this, but I think I've made my point. I like to end the video with some sort of conclusion, always. As long as we collectively don't say no to all the above and more, we are doomed to play their yearly FIFAs and Call of Duties until we die. On one hand, players should definitely up their standards how they see fit. The gaming industry evolves all the time. Players are not unreasonable. If a game is made by 5 devs in a basement, players don't start review bombing that game for not being up to AAA standards. So let's leave indie and medium studios out of this discussion, please. For another day. And on the other hand, developers, and especially vocal developers like this, need to realize how this shit works. Note, I don't think they don't know how it works, but I think they are lying. Let me explain in the shortest time possible. You live and die by the goodwill you generate. And you trade with that commodity. Take CDPR, for example, when Cyberpunk was released. Or Bungie, with their endless Destiny 2 dramas, for example. These guys are exchanging goodwill for cash. When they will need more goodwill from the players, they will start doing what Larian did with Baldur's Gate 3. Good games, no bullshit. In any field you can think of, doing something great is praised. But lately in this industry is the exact opposite. But if enough companies make good games, they will expose the industry for what it is. Let's talk a bit about the fact that some developers from prominent AAA studios voice their concerns. Keep in mind, those studios have large amounts of money, talent and tools to make what Larian Studios did in their preferred genre. Does Activision do with Call of Duty what Larian did with Baldur's Gate 3? Of course not. Does Bungie do with Destiny 2 what Larian did with Baldur's Gate 3? Of course not. They have everything they need to make it happen. But the magic formula that they perfected for 10 years tells them that the game they are spewing time and time again is good enough as it is and will generate tons of money anyway. That perfect formula says you don't need to work harder or work longer to make something truly great. If it works, why change it, right? It's a vicious cycle. Companies evolved in a way that extract more and more money out of people and we got used to it. And now we don't even know anything else anymore and even ask for more of the same. And when Larian comes with a good game, we all shit our pants. Players and developers alike taken by storm. I don't minimize what Larian did with Baldur's Gate 3, not at all. All I'm trying to say, they did a good game as everyone should try to do. Well, shit. Hope players will wake up at some point and see how shallow most of these AAA games are and not settle for mediocrity at some point in the near future. Maybe. This is all I got. See ya.